everyone, this is Erica from Confessions of a Homeschooler and today I am releasing this new quilt pattern. This is called Trade Winds and it has some really fun curved piecing down here on the bottom and so today I'm going to show you how to do these curves so you can make this fun quilt too. Alright, so in order to sew curves on fabric, um, it's actually really easy. We're just going to do freehand curves, um, but this same technique applies if you've got a pattern with curved piecing or anything like that. So I find that it does kind of help if my pieces are about the same length, however they don't need to be the same width. They can really vary however you would like to put um, yours together. The main thing that you need to remember when you're freehand cutting curves is that you want the right side or the pretty side of your fabric facing up when you cut these. Now these are, um, for the water on the quilt that I just showed you, these are uh, solids and so I don't really have a right or wrong side. But if you were to have a piece of fabric, for example, that was patterned with a back side, the pattern side would be going up. And that's gonna be a little bit um, contrary to what you normally do when you're quilting. Normally you put right sides together. But for this one, and we will do that in a minute, but for the cutting of the curves we put our right side, um, a right sides up for both the pieces. So it's really easy. All you do is you take, we're going to start with this piece and this piece, and we're going to just put the lighter one on top. And you want to just overlap it. Now, this one I'm just overlapping about this far. Whatever your overlap is, is how deep of a curve you're going to be able to do. So if you want to do really deep over, uh, or deep curves, you would overlap it more. If you're going to do really little, uh, kind of gentle curves, you can overlap it less. It's totally up to you. Just kind of keep in mind, I can feel that my line is right about here, um, and so I can tell when I'm cutting. I just don't want to go over that because then you'd have a weird um, flat line. So just keep um, your curves that you're going to be freehanding within your overlapped space. Now I'm going to turn my board this way a little bit so I can cut away from myself because that will be a little bit easier. And if you need to put some pins in, like if you can't see, I can actually see through this, you probably can't on camera, but if you need to put some pins in to kind of, you know, let you know where your area of overlap is, you can also just kind of throw a ruler on there as well, just so that you kind of know, you know, uh, your boundaries. And then you simply take a rotary cutter, and then we're just going to kind of free cut some curves. Now, the uh, deeper you make your curves, the more challenging it's going to be when you go to sew them. The um, softer you make your curves, or less uh, wavy, I guess you could say, the easier it will be to sew. So if you're brand new to this, the first time you might just want to try a test and just do like kind of an easy, you know, gentle curve. So for this one, I'm just going to start, and I just kind of hold it, keeping my hand out of the way, and I'm just going to cut some curves. Okay, now that was easy enough, right? I'm going to turn this back so you can see it again. So now what we're going to do is we're going to remove this piece. We don't need that anymore. And we are going to remove this piece. We don't need that anymore. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a nice exactly matched curve going on here. Now the next step is to take this, and now you're, now you're going to be flipping them right sides together like you normally would. And what I like to do is line up the tops of my uh, top fabric with the valleys of the other one and you're just going to need some pins for this and so I start out by pinning the top of one to the valley of the other and I just do both one both uh, high points here on my curve okay oops all right so that's good and then I will also pin this junction on the end here and the other end as well. Oh, the other end I'm going to wait for because it's a, a valley. Okay, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our valleys, we're going to bring them up to the curves. And it's going to start seeming slightly more, uh, like less manageable at this point, but it's okay. Just continue on with our process here and I'm just going to grab the valley here line it up to the top there and you want it it doesn't have to be perfect obviously it's going to move around a little bit you're on a bias now because you've cut curves and so there's going to be a little bit of give in your fabric and I'm going to do that with this one as well okay so now you've got something that's looking a little crazy 
but that's okay. Now what we're going to do, and it depends on how large your curves are, I usually will kind of try to uh, finagle this just a little bit. You can kind of um, ease it together so that you've basically got your two one, uh, valley and high point that you already pinned, and then we're just going to kind of pin somewhere in the middle of those, okay? So again, I'm going to take, here's my points, I'm going to kind of finagle my fabric together there and place another pin. And we're just going to do that down the rest here. And you're going to have a little bit of kind of craziness, but as you get sewing, it, it sort of works itself out and it's kind of like magic. All right, and then like if you have a really steep curve, sometimes it helps if you kind of fold it one way or the other and it can kind of help spread out those fabrics. But I just try and kind of eyeball it and get them pinned somewhere towards the center. Like I said, as you start sewing, it'll kind of come together. And then this is our last little piece here. And I'm just gonna throw a pin there. All right, now our fabric is looking relatively unruly and for a quilter it's kind of like a little bit frightening especially you've got all these crazy puckers and stuff but we're going to take this over to our sewing machine and we're just going to start on one edge and we're going to sew a quarter of an inch and we're just going to follow our curve all the way down so I'll show you what that looks like and this is actually going to kind of uh, smooth out nicely and then when we go to iron it you'll see that it really um, irons out great. Okay here we are at our machine and I just started at one side and as you can see I've got the darker side underneath there I'm going to do a quarter of an inch stitch and I'm just going to take a couple stitches before I remove my pin here just so I can make sure I'm okay and then as I go I'm just kind of pulling and just making sure that my edges line up and we're just going to continue on uh, sorry for the sound of the machine here but I want to be able to talk to you as we're going so And then as you get to these curves, you can just take out your pins and just kind of make sure that you're sort of flattening out both layers. And you may, if you get to a really high curve, you may need to lift your foot up and just kind of move your fabric around underneath a little bit. Uh, mine aren't too bad. So I can kind of guide it along the curve. And then you're just going to continue that process all the way down your curves. Now I've got a part here where one was a little bit lower, so I'm just going to kind of ease it in there. Okay, so now we have something that kind of looks a little bit like this, and let's go take it over the iron and, and uh, see what happens. Alright, so I like to iron towards the dark usually. So I'm just going to take this and just kind of start pushing my iron along those curves. And as you can see, it looks kind of crazy on the back side, but once you start ironing it out, those curves come out really nicely. Now I did have a teeny tiny pucker there, but it's okay. And you can either do this from the back side like, uh, or the front side, whichever one you prefer. Usually what I'll do is the back side, and then I'll flip it over and come hit it again on the front side. But look how nice and neat that curve came out. Okay, so here's our first completed curve and then just for fun we're going to add one more on and this is exactly how I did all the water in my sailboat. Um, I had a dark one and then I did this color actually and then this lighter one and then a white. You can totally do whatever kind of blue gradient you would like to do. Um, for this one I'm going to line these up and I'm just not going to go down into this navy blue so I don't want to put it any lower than that one um, because otherwise I'll have a, a curve down here and that's going to be kind of weird looking but you could do that if uh, if you like I'm going to go ahead and turn my board again and my fabric is ending right about here so I guess I can put my kind of ruler there to make sure I don't go over my line at all and then I'm just going to kind of do another curve. Now you can kind of follow the one you did. You can go opposite. Uh, you can really just, these are free form curves. You can really just do anything you would like. All right. And then again, we're going to get rid of the top. We're going to get rid of these bottom pieces. And then 
we've got our two matching curves here. Again, these were both pretty side facing up when you're doing this process. You want to make sure your uh, pattern or your right side of your fabric is facing up when you cut your curves. That way when you flip them right sides together to sew, um, you'll be having the right sides showing. Okay, so oops. Okay, so we're going to just flip this piece over just like we did the other ones. We're going to match up the hills first and then we'll pull up the valleys and match those up and then we will sew. Now one thing I don't like to pin very often, um, I don't know, it kind of just takes longer than I have the patience for when I'm quilting usually. If there's something you know that I really need it to be in a specific place or if I'm really lining up a seam then I'll for sure do that. Otherwise I tend to be um, not a pinner. However for this particular process you really do want to kind of pin your projects because once you start bending and going around curves and things like that it can get a little bit uh, hairy and uh, you just don't want your pattern to get too far off. Now um, as I mentioned you can kind of fudge your you know kind of ease your fabric into the curve a little bit because we've got these bias cuts now uh, so that's helpful and that's kind of what I'm doing as I pin it. I'm just kind of stretching it so it's about not stretching, but I'm just kind of easing it so that it's about halfway that I'm kind of repinning and I'm kind of staying on my curve. All right, so I'm just going to finish pinning this one and then we will take it over to the sewing machine and sew on this wave. All right, so here we are again, and um, I'd like this one to go to the dark, so I think it's going to be easier if I'm kind of holding it and then pressing it that way. And I just kind of pull the two pieces a little bit so I don't have any overlap there. Oh. Um, I also find when I'm doing curves like this, steam is really helpful. So that's the back side, and then I will usually flip it over. Uh, you can do steam or you could even squirt some water on there to kind of just help those curves. Uh, steam will kind of help your fabric stretch a little bit if you had a little uh, pucker or anything like that. But otherwise, I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, so here is our finished um, curvy piece and you can continue adding curves as you go up. You can do thin stripes, you can do thicker stripes. Uh, just with your thinner ones, just make sure that you have enough overlap for however deep you'd like your curve to be. Um, but that's it. Just remember to keep, when you're cutting your curves, keep your right sides up for both of your fabrics so you can see the pretty side because that way when you flip it over again, then you'll you know be sewing it together, right sides together like you normally would. So you just have to remember that when you're cutting your curves and you'll end up with perfectly matched curves every time. All right, I want to show you one other thing as far as making the sailboat quilt that I think will be helpful for you. Now, since you're sewing on a diagonal, but it's not a perfect square, it can be a little bit tricky. So I want to show you how um, I like to do that. So essentially what's going to happen is you're actually going to take one of your fabrics and draw a line from corner to corner. Um, now, as you can see, this isn't a perfect square, so it's going to be kind of an awkward angle. Okay, so I'll just take my pencil here, or my pen, these are friction erase pens. It's not going to matter because we're actually going to kind of cut on this line, but now, if you put it right here and sew along this line, and then try and cut it off, you're going to end up with this weird shaped kind of item. You're not going to end up with like a half square triangle like you normally would when you're doing a square um, diagonal. So, 
In order to make this sail work, what I like to do is this would be my sail, and let's say let's do the um, left side of our sail. Oops, sorry, this is going to be the right sail. Is line it up corner to corner, and then when I sew along this straight line and flip open this piece, then I'm going to end up with my rectangle with kind of this awkward diagonal line. Now if I wanted to make it go the other way, I would have to have my line going the opposite direction. So let's say my line was going this way, this would be my sew line. Then when I fold this fabric up, then I've got a left sail unit, or we can do it the way we're going to do it, which is we're going to create a right sail unit. Okay, so the white is the sail, the blue is the sky. Hopefully that makes sense. And in the instructions for the quilt, I do tell you which side to draw your line from top right to bottom left or top left to bottom right. Um, but I just want you to know that when you go to line these up, you actually turn the fabric at a diagonal. You're not sewing them straight together like you normally would. So for this one, we are going to go this direction. Okay, and then before we line these up and actually sew them, we're going to take our ruler and we're going to mark one half inch in from both corners. So right here, and we're just going to put a little dot there. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing on this corner. And then we're also going to do it on these bottom corners as well. This doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but it's just helpful for when you go in to line up your edges to give you that quarter of an inch. Okay, and then now what we're going to do is we're going to pin these corners and then since this is a bias seam that you're going to be sewing along, I like to pin along the seam as well. Now I'm showing you in a much smaller version of what it's going to be like for you because the sails are quite large on this quilt. But I take my pin and I stick it through that dot and then I stick it through this one and that's kind of my guide on lining up that corner. And then I do the same thing on these corners down here. So stick it through that dot I made and then also through this dot. And I just kind of pull them out. That keeps them in place. And as you can see, that's going to give us a little bit of an overlap on our corners here. Um, when you're doing, I say a half an inch on the larger ones um, because that'll give you just your half inch uh, when you sew and then chop off the other side. So then I carefully just will place pins sort of along this line. Now yours is going to be quite a bit bigger and so you're going to have to do a little bit of finagling to straighten those out. But that's the basic concept. Your sky should be at an angle one direction or the other depending on which sail you're working on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sew exactly on the line that we drew and then we're going to um, cut off our excess to complete our sail unit. So let's go take this over to the sewing machine. So here we are at our sewing machine and we're just going to sew regular straight stitch just like you were piecing anything else. We're just going to sew right on our line. Okay, so here we are back over at my cutting board, and um, I, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but I did sew just to the um, outside edge of my line just to give myself a little bit of room for my seam allowance, but just barely. Um, and then your edges, your corners should kind of have a little bit of an overlap like I mentioned. This will be, obviously again, this is a much smaller version than what you're doing on your sailboat, but this works on really any kind of awkward angle. Now before I cut, I just want to fold my fabric open to make sure that I did indeed sew it the right way because once you cut it, you're kind of, you know, in trouble. Now you can go this way, um, however if you have directional print, um, you know, or this, say you have like the stripes on the sailboat and you need this to be one side or the other, um, that that can kind of mess you up. So just make sure before you cut it that you're folding your fabric open and that you know which side you're cutting off, um, you know, just, just to save yourself some heartache and some wasted um, fabric as well. And then I just go ahead and cut this off at a quarter inch. I'm just putting my quarter inch marker on my line right there, just like you kind of normally would. Now you will have some um, leftover fabric for this. For the sailboat quilt, these can be quite large, but um, certainly easy to use up large scraps. And so um, that is kind of a, a downside at doing these awkward angles, but that's really the best way to ensure that you get the proper angle. And then all you have to do 
is press it open and voila, you have one uh, sail unit for the sailboat. So hopefully that helps you out. The instructions, I try to write it clearly as possible, um, but sometimes I think seeing it on video can really help. So I just wanted to kind of show you that little trick uh, for creating the sails. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed this curvy sewing tutorial. Hopefully you found it really easy. It was kind of a fun new experiment for me, but um, all in all, I really love how this quilt turned out. It was super fun to make. It's really easy to put together in just you could probably do the whole top in just one day and then um, quilt it and bind it, you know, over the next couple of days. So super cute, super fun, super easy, very beginner friendly. So I hope you enjoy this. I will put a link where you can get this quilt pattern below as well. But either way, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.